What is up y'all, this is Alex from Alex PC Tech again, back at you with another video. And on today's video, we're gonna be overclocking the 6700 XT using the Adrenaline software. Now, this is a short tutorial, so let's get on with it. As you can see with the screen, I have here the Adrenaline Radeon software. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to performance and go to the tuning. So just a disclaimer, what we're gonna be doing is perfectly safe, overclocking the video card through the adrenaline software is perfectly safe and it gains you extra performance you can tweak your card to have more performance for actually free so i so that's why i believe that overclocking is a must in case you have bought or you are already an owner of a gpu now as you can see here i've already dialed my settings this is my optimized settings for my video card right now and we're gonna start by resetting everything okay so i'm gonna save this profile first i'm gonna save it and then i'm gonna be resetting everything as you can see so once we reset it you're gonna want to have to go to manual so as you can see here there are several presets for tuning preset automatic you can undervolt it automatically overclock and uh overclock vram so depends on you but for us we're gonna go to manual and we're gonna go and activate all of these sliders or all of these toggles so what i usually do is i start with power tuning now power tuning is what gives your card more headroom performance for example it requires more power in order to reach the maximum boost clock of your overclock then you can this is where you can change that so for me I actually maximize this power limit to up to 15 so that in case it needs more power then it will not be power hungry because of the power limit percentage so we can maximum maximize that one out so the next slider that I usually change is the GPU power tuning okay so after that after checking this one out what you're gonna want to do is enable the advanced control on the gpu tuning so we have minimum frequency and maximum frequency so for my card which is the 6700 xt mind you every card has a different threshold a different threshold for each value or each overclock okay so for me what i found out is that i can actually have 2700 as the minimum frequency and for the maximum frequency i have 2800 now in your case how do you determine this one actually i started out by having 2600 megahertz first okay and putting the maximum frequency to plus 100 to 2700 like this one 2600 to 2700 i started off with this one so how did i come up with 2600 so for the frequency of my video card what i did was since the boost clock was up until 2500 up until 2500 according to xfx i added an extra 100 on that maximum boost clock that they are saying so what we did was we did 2600 first and then 2007 on the max frequency so it there's a 100 difference between the minimum and the maximum frequency but in my case upon testing what i found out is that the 6700 can actually does perform better if i put this to 2700 and 2800 after that what i do is i apply changes and i run a benchmarking tool so the benchmarking tool that i usually use that i actually use for overclocking is the firmark so under firmark what i usually do to test my preset for example this card is actually for a 1440p performance or it performs it is marketed as a 1440p card so what i do is i use the preset 1440 qhd in benchmarking my maximum to minimum frequency so once i dial those in and i got a high score and a high fps mind you if you set the minimum and maximum frequency it will actually hurt your performance sometime because there there is a point of diminishing the turn returns when it comes to this values so if you put too much value 
as I've done here. I will show you a graph later of how I did my increments so that you can see the point of diminishing returns in adding values to the minimum and maximum frequency. So as of now, this is what I've got. 2700 to 2800 and now let's talk about the voltage now the voltage is a very important part of this overclocking procedure because since you are overclocking you're pushing your clocks to a maximum speed it will draw higher temperatures now one thing or one way to offset the temperature is that you can actually undervolt or minimize the voltage that is coming to your card while having the same performance or an improved performance so in my case what I came up with is that I started up with 1100 okay I started with a voltage of 1100 and worked my way down in 25 or 10 increments depending on depending on what value I want but I I did increment uh, decrement by 10 values okay so i ended up with 1025 so now since we are here oops so i ended up with having a stable clock of 1025 so since we are already here okay what you usually do is after you set the minimum and maximum frequency what you're gonna want to do is adjust the voltage decrement it by 25 or 10 values and then again test through your benchmarking software for around one or two minutes so as i've said earlier i use firmark for this one but i'm gonna show you this graph so that you have an idea on how i did this overclock with this with these values first i tested out the fps min from the balance and quiet mode of the default presets from the adrenaline software so what i got was at around 7000 plus score and a minimum fps of 124 or 127 once i did the overclock i did it incrementally so i started off with 2600 to 2700 all the way to 2700 for the minimum and maximum frequency now for the voltage okay once i dial this in perfectly i decremented this by tens okay so i decremented it by 10 by 10 by 10 until i reached the point of what did i reach i reached this point of no return value and it actually hurt the performance of the card okay now the problem with this one is i can set can i settle with this one because it is the highest score as of now no, because aside from doing a benchmark, sorry, aside from doing a benchmark of the um, score, I need to also benchmark this with my games. So for example, if I run my system with this one, for example, the highest score that I have, it's unstable with while playing like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Call of Duty Warzone or Dota 2. So what I actually did is after you set this one up, you need to work your way up again in order to check what is the maximum voltage that you your games are not crashing into. So for me, I found out that the value that is actually stable is at around 1020. So I stayed with that one until I, I was not crashing anymore, okay? I was able to run the lowest or this one, the 945 volts or millivolts in the, with, um, with Fermark, but in Heaven, it was actually crashing. Heaven benchmark, that is. Uh, that's another benchmark tool that you can use in order to gauge your benchmark or your overclocking. Next is, aside from this one, as you can see here on this side, I tried to add again a minimum frequency and a maximum frequency. This Now this is, I believe, is the point of diminishing returns in terms of the minimum and maximum frequency. As you can see, it hurt my FPS and it hurt the score of the benchmark. So I returned it back to 2000. 700 to 2800 and worked my voltages way down or way up depending on how stable the system is now 
let's go back to the adrenaline software now in the adrenaline software what you're gonna want to do is after that is to tune the fans i did enable zero rpm and i have this advanced control enabled as well so this is a fan control speed now how do you determine your fan speed in overclocking for me it's how con how audible the fans are and how comfortable are you with them so for example i ramp if i ramp them up much higher than this one then i it will be audible and i will not be able to play my games comfortable because i want to have a silent pc so this is like a just like the other values a trial and error but in general terms in general the general rule is if you don't want to enable this advanced control you can set the max speed of the fan to at around 68 i i found out that that is actually one of the ways or that is actually a silent setup but for me i set it up in a custom curve as you can see if you want to follow, uh, copy these values and apply them to your 6700 you can actually do this okay next after that after doing the fan curve what i do now is enable vram tuning so memory tuning i'll set to fast timing and then for the advanced control i'll set it up to enabled so advanced control you can actually pick this slider and slide it up all the way to the maximum but for me what i what worked was i set it up to 2100 at first and then worked my way up so until you don't encounter like because if you maximum maximize this one out or you put it on the maximum you might encounter some stuttering or some aliasing or some weird artifacts on your games so for me what i did was i set it up first to 2100 and worked my way up and i found out that 2110 was my value was the best value that i can where i can attain no artifacts or no black screens or no crashing in the game okay so after that you can apply the changes and run your benchmark tool and see how your overclock is affecting your game so for me this is what i got because of my of my 6700x from xfx this is the quick edition but if ever you don't have the same video card this is actually also applicable to amd cards all amd cards same methodology first is you again adjust the power tuning and then go to the gpu tuning and find out the minimum and maximum frequency and then adjust the voltage so this is like an undervolt procedure that we have here so we gradually decrease the voltage until we met a stable system a stable that is not crashing in the benchmark and also in the games after that is the vram tuning so vram tuning and the zero rpm the fan tuning that will depend on you but there can be interchangeable you can like tune the fan later after you did the vram or do the vram first but it, regardless overclocking is free performance for your pc and it's perfectly safe so if you have or if you have a lot of knowledge gained from this video if you learned something like this video and share it to people or to your friends who are wondering how to overclock their system if they have an amd system we'll be creating another tutorial with msi combustor or msi afterburner because that's the previous software that i use but if you're a beginner the amd region software is a perfect tool for you that you can use in order to safely overclock your GPU. Like if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you on the next video.